Hey guys, welcome to Casual Car Audio. A lot of this information can be find on, found online, but it's scattered all over the place and it was relatively, it was time consuming for me anyways to learn all this stuff. And I wanna try and make it simple for the next guy. So everything is installed in your car and we're gonna, this is gonna be either for a two-way or a three-way setup. And the very first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, make sure that we don't introduce any clipping into the system. And then we're going to want to um, also um, gain match our components. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is when you're running uh, an active three-way system or two-way system, most often... Uh, more often than not, you're going to have, I have like mid range up here and then I've got my tweeters up here still work in progress, but the tweeters and the, the mid range are going to be a lot lower RMS rating than your woofers are obviously your mid base. Um, cause they're tiny speakers. So four channel amp or whatever you're using is going to be rated much higher. And what we want to do is first of all, we don't want to introduce clipping, but we also want to make sure that we're not overpowering our drivers and causing damage to them while also providing the most optimum amount of power that they can handle. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to get on our head unit, go to a settings. So we're going to want to make sure that our equalizer is completely flat. Okay. Um, we're going to want to make sure that all speaker levels, I don't know how your head unit is set up, but we're going to want all speaker levels to be set at zero so that essentially we want our head unit to be completely flat and, uh, none of the settings enabled essentially. Okay. So crossovers, we want these completely disabled because we'll be using the DSP to, to handle that and our amps, um, <clears throat> fader balance, not going to use any of that. Uh, and then listening position and time alignment. This head unit has that. We're going to have that turned off. Again, we'll be using the DSP for that. Never use bass boost. Never, never use loudness. All that stuff, okay? So the very first thing we're going to do is um, <clears throat> we're going to need you to download an app. And this app's going to be crucial for this series because what it allows you to do is it allows you to play um, pink noise and whatnot, but it also allows you to select specific frequency points and play a tone for that. It's a tone generator. And this is going to be very important when we end up setting um, our, cro our crossovers later and then also setting our time alignment. So I could literally click on this and put, let's say I'm going to cross over my, um, my mid-range and my tweeters at 4200. I can specifically pick 4200 on this tone generator and play that for my speakers, okay? But for the sake of um, preventing clipping and uh, setting our sensitivity on our amps and whatnot, we're just going to use the typical 40 hertz and 1000, okay? Um, <clears throat> you're also going to want to get yourself an oscilloscope. And if you're serious about you know, having good sound quality in your system, you've already spent the money on a two-way or a three-way, you might as well spend a few more dollars and get a decent oscilloscope, all right? It is important. All right, so let's get started. I have unplugged my RCA cable that goes directly into the DSP, and we are gonna use the oscilloscope with some um, alligator clips. Uh, so that we can see when our head unit begins to clip. I have a Pioneer head unit. These are notorious for being able to pretty much max out before they clip. So I'm going to play this tone. And I am going to go ahead and turn this all the way up to 40. And I'm going to show you on the oscilloscope. So here's the oscilloscope. And you can find online how to use one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the time. And I'm going to widen this so we can see see how it's clipping, how it squares off at the top there. So I know with my, my stereo that as soon as I turn it down to 39 out of 40, 
the 1000 hertz tone is good. See, no more clipping. But after you do the 1000 hertz, now you're gonna wanna do the 40 hertz. Because just because you're not clipping at a higher frequency doesn't mean you're not gonna clip at a lower frequency. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my tone generator and this time I'm gonna play 40 hertz. And this one, because it's a, uh, <clears throat> a lot lower frequency, the band's gonna be a lot wider. So I'm gonna need to change this, the time setting on this, and you can see we are clipping, all right? So now I'm gonna turn it down one more to 38, and 38 on my head unit is where 40 hertz does not clip. So that means we are going to use the lowest denominator here, and 38 is gonna be the max we're ever gonna set our head unit. And by the way, uh, to show you how I've got this set up here, I've got these little alligator clips. And it's good because it has this um, rubber uh, cover on it. So that what you can do is the middle um, part of the RCA cable is the positive and the outside is the negative. So by clipping on it this way, the shielding is preventing contact with the positive. If you can see See that? Okay. And that allows us to get a good reading on this. Now, if you're using a uh, high level, so um, speaker input, then you can just plug right into the wires with, with your oscilloscope. But in my case, I'm using RCA wires. All right, guys, now we know when our head unit clips. So now we can go ahead and move along down the, uh, the chain, which the next one is my DSP. Um, the way that I do it is I actually go to each and every one of my channels and I set it to negative four dB. This gives me headroom to be able to adjust the gain settings or the sensitivity settings on my amplifiers. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to see when our amplifiers begin to clip with the sensitivity settings. All right, I'm lucky in the fact that I am running JL amplifiers and there's actually uh, uh, input sensitivity and a clipping notifier on there for me. But if you do not have that, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do this. So we're gonna go ahead and use our alligator clips and we're gonna plug into uh, the speaker outputs. I have mine using these um, bullet connectors so I can just disconnect my speakers whenever I need to, remove my amp rack. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my alligator clips and attach it to the positive and the negative of the speaker wire. All right guys, so I've unmuted my tweeter channels and I have the alligator clips connected to one of my tweeters. So right now we are not clipping. And I am going to go ahead and turn up my amp. And you can see my clipping note of light is coming on and we are very clearly clipping. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to keep turning this down until we're not clipping. See, we'll just call it right there. All right, that's step one of the process. Now, we wanna make sure that we are not giving these tweeters too much power because that's gonna damage them. Because this JL is rated at 75 watts per channel and I saw a dyno somewhere where they're underrated. They're pushing like 90 watts per channel and that'll very easily destroy my tweeters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little math and with Ohm's law, I found this on online as well. There's a few different channels that show it. But basically how it works is your watts RMS times ohms, and then the square root of that equals your volts, and that's the max volts you wanna use per channel, okay? So for my case, my tweeter in my mid range is 50 watts RMS, at four ohms, 50 watts times four is 200. 
and the square root of 200 is 14.14. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna switch and we are going to go ahead and raise this until we are right at 14. And just to be on the safe side, 13.91, that's good for me. All right, so on my JL amp, you can see it's not clipping. And this should be right around 50 watts. Now, the thing is, when you are using a DSP, you should have your crossover set. And that's where this can get a little crazy because if you are testing a tweeter and you're doing the 1000 hertz test tone in my case i have mine crossed over at 4200 so if i use a 1000 hertz test tone uh it's not even going to be my dsp is not even going to be really giving that signal out to those speakers okay so that's another reason why this this app that i downloaded is is particularly nice i found that going all the way up to like 14,000 will yield different results. In this case, check it out. Now, we are clipping like a motherfucker. All right, this would destroy your tweeters. So, you gotta play around with this. I found that uh, the amount of voltage that peaks with my DSP and amp is like around 17,000 for my uh, my tweeters. As you can see, we're at 25.52 and we're clipping very easily destroying our tweeters. Now is when we are going to go ahead and back down until we get to that 14 sweet spot. So if you had used the typical 1000 Hertz that you find everywhere online and you turned up the volume on your system, Goodbye tweeters. That's why this app is paramount for this situation. Okay. So now if I crank it up all the way to 38 and I'm listening to, you know, some rock music and there's some cymbals and shit being hit, I don't have to worry about blowing my tweeters. You're always looking for a worst case scenario. Okay. What's the very worst case scenario that could happen here? So, tweeter and mid-range do it the same exact way. Mid-range, I have that crossed over at 4200, and I found that mine, the output of mine peaked at around, I think it was like 1600 or 1800 hertz. So I played a test tone around that, and then you know brought it back down to just under 14. Then I moved on to mid-bass, for my mid base, it was 150 watts RMS because I have my JL bridged. So times four is 600. Square root of that is 24.49. And then uh, the subwoofer is where it's a little different. Okay, so a lot of people will have like dual voice coils. So in my case, I've got a 1200 watt sub RMS at dual four ohm voice coils but I have it wired to my JL amp at two ohms. So in that case, you're gonna do two, 1200 watts RMS times two, not times four. If you did times four here, you'd fuck your subwoofer up. All right, so that's very important. Um, very important. All right, so that's basically it, guys. That is all I'm gonna give you for this video. On the next video, we are going to work on Time alignment.